SwiftUI's at app storage property wrapper is great for storing simple values like integers and booleans. But when we have complex data, Swift structs for example, that's when it takes more work. This is where we're going to try and poke around with user defaults directly rather than going through the higher level app storage property wrapper. As an example, we'll make a struct that stores a user with a first name string and a last name string. It has two strings, but they aren't special, they're just pieces of text. The same goes for integers, just plain old numbers, booleans, true or false, doubles, still plain old numbers, just with a dot in there somewhere, and so on. Even arrays and dictionaries of those types are easy to think about. There's one string, then another string, another one, another one, another one, and so on. Now, when working with data like this, Swift gives us a protocol called Codable, which is really fantastic. A protocol specifically for archiving and unarchiving data, which is a fancy way of saying converting them into plain text and back again. We'll look at Codable much more in future projects, but for now, we'll make it as simple as possible. We want to archive a custom type like user so we can put it into user defaults then unarchive it when it comes back out of user defaults. When we have simple property types like this one here, integers, strings, booleans, arrays of strings, and so forth, the only thing we've got to do is add a conformance to Codable, like this. Codable. And behind the scenes, Swift will automatically generate for us code required to archive and unarchive user instances for us as needed. But we still have to tell Swift when to archive, and of course, what to do with the data. This part of the process is handled with a new type called JSON encoder. Its job is to take something that conforms to codable, like our user struct, and send it back in JavaScript object notation format, JSON, JSON. I know the name suggests it's specific to codable, as opposed to JavaScript, sorry, but in fact, it, we all use it because it's just so fast and simple. Now the Codable protocol does not require that we use JSON. And in fact, there are other formats available. Particular XML formats are very common. But JSON is by far the most common. And in this instance, we don't actually care what sort of data is being used because it's just gonna be stored in user defaults. It's not being sent to a server somewhere or anything like that. It's just being stashed away in user defaults, then read back out again. So to convert our user instance here into JSON data, we first got to call, call the uh, encode method on a JSON encoder. This might throw errors. So we've got to use try or try question mark to handle errors neatly. First up, let's make an at state property to store our user. I'll say user, first name, Taylor, last name, Swift. We'll then make a button inside our view body like this, save user. It will archive the user and save it to user defaults. So again, we'll make an instance of JSON encoder, like that, and then call encoder.encode and pass in our user. Again, this might throw errors, so we'll do it carefully. We'll say if let data equals try question mark encoder.encode our user, if it's worked, it'll be in data, ready to go. We can now say user defaults dot standard dot set data for key user data. So we're reading user defaults directly rather than trying to go through the at app storage property wrapper because it just doesn't work very well here. Now this thing, data, is a new data type called, perhaps confusingly, data with a capital D. Um, it's designed to store any kind of data you can think about. Strings, images, zip files, who knows what, right? Here though, all we care about is that data is one of the types supported by user defaults, like int, bool, string, and double. When we're coming the other way, when we have JSON data, we want to convert it back to a Swift codable type, like our user type here, it's very similar. We just use JSON decoder rather than JSON encoder. 
but the process is much the same. Now that brings us to the end of our project overview. So please go ahead, undo all your changes to reset your project to the initial state, ready to build on.